You're listening to Forward Faster, bite-sized insights for entrepreneurs. So, Chow, Chow Shen, I would like to introduce you to our uh, Forward Faster video podcast. You are the CTO and uh, technical leader of Sanur Technologies. Yes. And also, congratulations, you are a member of the cohort number three of Luminate. Thank you, Demo. And uh, the technology that you that we'll be talking about is that uh, you guys are using uh, lasers as a mm -hmm. new form of wireless communication, uh, yes. Li-Fi. And the first thing I wanted to ask is just for some groundwork, can you say what Li-Fi is as compared to what we know now as Wi-Fi? Yes. So I believe everyone is familiar with the term Wi-Fi that people are using almost every day. Like, similar to that, Li-Fi is another optical wireless communication technology that enable data communication using light. So just think that if the light is blinking really fast, it serves as a function to transmit signal. Mm -hmm. And later Li-Fi is by using a unique uh, component called lasers that will enable really, really high speed data communication by using visible light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Visible light, we are talking about white light. We are talking about blue, green, mm -hmm. or other visible color range. And that, why we use white light is because we can utilize our existing lighting infrastructure that add on more functions, the uh, data access point function into the current lighting system. Okay. I It, it works by... Like line of sight, I've heard people refer to it as mm -hmm. fiber optics without the the fiber. Yes. Is that a, okay? Okay, great. Um, so there are some specific applications that we have for this because what are some places where Wi-Fi doesn't work really well? Because yes. that's why you are developing this in the first place. That's true. Actually, the Li-Fi, from my personal point of view. I don't believe that Li-Fi will replace the Wi-Fi technology entirely, mm -hmm. but rather we will become a technology that will work at certain environments where Wi-Fi does not work. That will include certain uh, RF sensitive area. That will include those regions you need really high security data links and also in underwater. We do see a huge demand for wireless internet access in underwater environments, but unfortunately, because water absorbs all the radio wave, so Wi-Fi is not working in underwater in ocean. Okay. The water happens to have a low attenuation, which means has a long transmission distance in the blue and green color regime. Mm -hmm. That's why we use Li-Fi, especially later Li-Fi, for underwater data communication we do see a huge commercial value in that application. So as far as the commercial applications go, what is one example of something you would do as a commercial under commercial application underwater? Yeah, so actually the current technology for underwater communication is using acoustic, which is really, really slow. And that cannot support video streaming. Mm. And the current data harvesting in underwater equipment, it still used cabled uh, technology or wired technology, which is not convenient and uh, has a limited mobility. Mm -hmm. So we do see using laser life fi or optical uh, communication technology in underwater will change the entire application for underwater exploration, uh, sensor monitoring. The entire uh, industry will will benefit from such a uh, new connectivity technology. Okay. So Wi-Fi doesn't work at all underwater? Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, no. okay, okay. Yeah. that makes complete sense then. So you developed this technology in graduate school. What yeah. inspired you to start Sanur then out of graduate school? Well, yes, that's an interesting uh, uh, point because as an engineer, I always want to see my research and my study will become a real product that is used in current uh, in industry or by uh, users and customers. And that is the motivation always in my mind. 
that pushed me to work on the startup project that tried to bring the research work from a sketch in the lab into something real that people can use in current industry applications. So you've always had sort of an entrepreneur feeling within from the beginning then? That was always something you had in mind? Or did it happen while you were in graduate school? Well, I believe that is what is always in my mind okay. since like okay. maybe middle school. Okay, okay. <laughs> Did you have any things you've commercialized before? Did you have a lemonade stand or something? <laughs> well, mm, any successful story, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, this is the first successful story. Okay. When you said middle school, I was wondering if you had some sort of middle school business that you had started. Well, I do, you, you know, make something quite fancy toy stuff in my middle school, attend certain competitions, like making robots that okay. attending the football match, the robot calf stuff, but that is most of them are for fun. So. Okay. <laughs> but you were you were making robots as yeah. a middle school student yeah. as as an entrepreneurial project then. Uh, so you've been doing you've had this idea for a long time then. Yeah, but most of them are for just for Having fun okay. with my friends. So. Okay. <laughs> but it's fun to be able to do that kind of thing for a living then if you've always enjoyed yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. So you are now here in the Luminate cohort. And yes. I'm curious to know what you have found. We've only been here for a couple of months. But what have you yeah. found to be the biggest benefit so far while you're here? Well, I think the uh, mentorship we received during this uh, Lumina program is a huge value to to me and to us as well. Uh, as a scientist and engineer by training, so my mindset is always like doing some uh, find a problem and try to solve it problem. But by participating in this Lumina program. It helped to change my mindset a little bit into more customer oriented and business oriented, which is, I think, is huge value to guarantee a startup a more successful one. Yeah, uh, having come out of graduate school, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. Yeah, coming out from a, a scientist mindset to moving into a business mindset is a is a big change. At the end of six months, what we do mm -hmm. is a demo day, yes, demo no pressure, day. <laughs> but what are you planning to have accomplished by the time we get, I, that's only four and a half months, again, no pressure, but <laughs> at the end of six months, where do you think you're going to be? Actually, I'm looking forward to that. So by, uh, by June, we believe we are going to have our new generation of the uh, product mm -hmm. ready for showcase, and we we plan to complete our uh, business case and build up a strong uh, business case and also become more investment ready mm -hmm. by demo day. Okay. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, uh, the black box there, is that a current product for well, you guys now? Yeah, this is the current one. This okay. is the uh, transmitter, this is the receiver. Okay. So this is a little transmitter. Is the, uh, we make it into a torchlight. So it's okay, as an example, running. right. Yeah, as an example, right. So this is a very high brightness one. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it Don't shine this in your eye, right. <laughs> yeah, it can transmit up to a kilometer range in, uh, the, in the air. And this is a high-speed receiver okay. that uh, will enable more than gigabit per second data rate, which is... I should say, 100 times faster than the current 4G network. And how far does that flashlight go? Well, you this flashlight can yeah, reach up to a kilometer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, I want one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Definitely. We will provide oh, during wow. the demo. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's, that would be great. Um, and the other question that I have as far as coming into the Luminate program, mm -hmm. is are there any things that surprised you when you when you showed up here in January? Well, I think about it before I uh, decided to work on the uh, startup company, but then I was not realized that there are so many things and so many 
part of the uh, uh, so many aspects of business you need to take care of as a as a founder or as a boss. Mm -hmm. So generally, it's not easy to be a boss than a staff. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you need to take care of the. Taxation, incorporation, payroll, HR, and you need to plan for the competitive advantage, marketing, sales, IP, product development, following up with the leads, attending trade shows, a lot of things. And right now, there's only two of you in the company, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a lot of work. <laughs> so in that long list of things, what do you think has been the hardest part of starting a company? Uh I guess when you when you made this idea, you started in graduate school. What's been the hardest part about getting to where you are now? Well, the uh, I believe the hardest part actually is try try to make the first step, mm -hmm. try to move the first step out of the. I mean, as a, a PhD graduate, uh, I'm already. Receive enough training on how to do a research project, and how to write papers, and how to write even like proposal for mm -hmm. grants. Well, it's it's more straightforward to to become a postdoc research fellow uh, because that is uh, more comfortable yeah. zone for me. Yeah. But when you decide to jump out, but don't get me wrong. I'm not mentioning that become a postdoc and uh, going for a faculty position is not valuable. It is also important right. uh, uh, career path to to purchase, but it is more difficult to jump out to decide to start a right. a, pro a startup project. Yeah. Yeah. Even making the decision from going from academic yeah. into industry, it that still. Going and deciding to start your own company is yeah. still a much bigger uh, step than just those two decisions people have to make. Yeah, right that's true on. because it's highly risky. Yeah, so. yeah, uh, yeah. That's uh, that's really interesting. So I guess along those lines, what do you? What advice would you give to somebody who is thinking about doing a startup? Well, I think I'm still new in terms of like entrepreneurship and starting a uh, business. So I I don't think I can get, give too much advice, but one of the experience I want to share is it's really important to get support from your family. Mm. So I really appreciate the, the support from my wife and also my parents. They uh, give us a lot of uh, freedom and the time to do what I really want to do, that is working on the Sanu project yeah that's really that's really nice to hear yeah. um so with that in mind where do you think you are going to be 10 years from now i guess first of all as an industry as a whole um actually let me back up where do you think you're going to be in 10 years uh you've talked about your your company so where do you think sonor is going to be 10 years from now yeah to be frank uh, the target uh, market Sanu is currently working on is more on the uh, industry mm -hmm. uh, applications. So they do have a certain latency to switch into uh, new technologies in current uh, industry. But I do see in 10 years definitely the uh, uh, Sanu's product on high speed Later, Li-Fi will be used uh, in the market, mm -hmm. and the company will re will reach out to different market segments apart from the uh, uh, video streaming and uh, the uh, and the water monitoring. We will uh, reach out to different applications in mm -hmm. ten years that will include to empowering the Internet of Underwater Things mm -hmm. or IOUT. So I believe in 10 years, this will become the uh, case. Is illumination also a project? Uh, you've got your, your light here. Is that yes. something that you see as becoming a product or, as well, or is that an example of, of what you can do with your technology? Well, illumination is definitely a, a much lower market entry point. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, and that segment, actually, we already start to use it in current underwater exploration mm. that's during our field trial. Okay. So uh, that is that's something we can do now, today. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's not your official point of entry mm-hmm. as a company, but it's something that you're already capable, yes. capable of doing. Do you have revenue from that as well at this point? With well, the light sources? Well, yeah, we, we do uh, sell the uh, uh, light sources and oh, we do okay. receive ordering of these light sources. Okay, yeah. so I could buy one if yeah. I wanted to. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Maybe uh, I'll give you one for free. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's not how you make money, but... <laughs> well, uh, as a promotional gift. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, as long as people need to understand that I don't get to vote on who, uh, who went to Z- Illuminate. So uh, it's not a bribe. Uh, so don't do anything until after the program is over. But, uh, yeah, I am really impressed with that. If we reel back to the topic of, of LiFi mm-hmm. as a field, where do you think that is going to be in 10 years? You said before that you don't feel like it's going to replace Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. but what areas do you think it's going to be able to move into? So actually, when people move in beyond current 5G discussion, uh, people already start to look at using optical communication mm-hmm. uh, as the new, as a part of the 6G and beyond 6G technology uh, in the future wireless network. Mm-hmm. And I do see using Li-Fi uh, will become part of the solution for okay. high speed, uh, multiple users and high bandwidth data access point by using uh, uh, optical communication technology. Okay. Integrating or hybrid with the uh, the uh, microwave technology. Okay. So kind of like being able to have your own fiber optic connection without the, the fiber. Without the fiber, okay. yes. Okay, okay. That makes a lot of sense. You are right. And I think that hits everything I wanted to ask you today. Uh, thank you for joining us here. Was there anything else you wanted to add? And the answer can be no. Uh, but uh, yeah, is there anything else you've got to say either to Luminate or to listeners? Uh, I will say all the best and good luck to all the Luminate cohort okay. startups. And okay. also all the best to all the Next Golf partners. Okay. Yeah. And it sounds like you have a history of entrepreneurship. Uh, it, <laughs> and it, you may be able to add the title of serial entrepreneur, which is a very popular thing. And yeah, I am really uh, pleased to hear all this. Okay. Thank you for this interview. And uh, we will talk to you more later within a few months, I bet. Sure. Okay. Looking forward to that. Thank, Thank you, Damon. Bye. Bye.